So it seems that the theme for 2020 is going to be the word finally, in addition to other things. As yes, finally, Microsoft finally announced the Surface Duo and we're not sure how we feel about it. It looks like the iPhone 12 won't be delayed as we thought it would, but it's not like if Apple doesn't have a ton of leakers to hit or miss. And Google is releasing a bunch of new features to help you work and study from home since that's what we do. I'm Jaime Rivera, and then another thing that we do is pretty much lose track of the fact that it's no longer Sunday. It's actually Wednesday. This is Pocket Out Daily. The official news today begin with deals. For those of you asking what computer I use to edit my videos, actually, there are some really good sales for it right now. As yes, Amazon currently has the 16 inch MacBook Pro for $300 off, leaving the Intel Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage for 2,100 bucks. Now, if you want more storage, which is the one I have, it's the Intel Core i9, one terabyte variant for $350 off. That leaves it at 2449. Then we've got the LG GA ThinQ, which is $100 off, leaving the 100 128 gigabyte variant for $400 shipped. Samsung Galaxy A51 is also $111 off, leaving it at $288 shipped. Now we've got more deals for Samsung QLED TVs in addition to iPads and more in the description. Now, obviously the companies that are adapting to everything that's happening are going to be the ones that are most successful. And obviously Google pretty much just told employees that they could work from home for the next year, for the next 11 months, pretty much. So obviously I'm sure they work for tools to make this easier. And now they're porting some of these tools to, you know, the rest of us as part of their suite of things that they do. Probably the most basic one is the fact that you are now able to create a business card, pretty much like a card on the web, on the search application. All you have to do is search the term, add me to search. You tap the get started and it will help you create a people card where you can create a public profile that should serve as a business card, kind of like the ones you get for celebrities. Oddly, this is the one they should have used for Google Plus so many years ago. But yes, yeah, for learning aspects and being able to work from home, a couple of months ago, they added a feature to the Lens application where it would be able to scan 3D anatomy models and cellular structures. Now they're also adding a new technology to snap a picture of your study material, highlight a specific equation, and it will give you a step-by-step -step direction on how to solve it. Yeah, I know that one's dangerous. Finally, they're adding a ton of features to Google Meet and Classroom, like to-do lists, Q&As, poll tools, and more. So yeah, more information on that in the description. My God, I just finished my statistics course for college. I wish this existed back then, guys. I mean, it's it's been crazy. Just trying to remember how these things are done. Now let's talk about other official news, particularly when it comes to smartphone sales. Lately, we covered how these were doing in China, but it turns out that now that we've got information on the United States, it's rather revealing to see what is the most popular. Right now, Apple leads the pack with 47% of the market while growing 10%, and Samsung came in second with 23%, but they declined by 1% when compared to last year. Next up, we've got LG, Lenovo, and TCL to complete the top five. But what's interesting is that apparently $1,000 flagships flopped and the average consumer paid $500 for their smartphone. I mean, with unemployment, Canalys predicts that the sub $400 market segment is gonna start heating up. And this is the reason why products like the OnePlus Nord or the Google Pixel 4a matter so much. This is what people can buy right now and I find this to be what companies should focus on. Now we've got two separate news when it comes to Apple uh, that kind of intertwine, so Bear with me a little. According to Bloomberg and Foxconn, China will no longer be considered as the world's factory for them. Uh, you know, Foxconn is a Taiwanese company and we know that they have been expanding their operations to other countries like India, Vietnam and others. And on this report, they stated that no matter if it's India, Southeast Asia or the Americas, there will be a manufacturing ecosystem in each of these. China will still be a key location for them, but they will no longer consider them to be the main factory. Foxconn's current capacity outside of China is 30%. So we're not exactly sure how the transition is going or how this is going to affect the iPhone 12 or how that's gonna happen, but we'll definitely keep you posted. But yeah, let's continue talking about the iPhone 12 timeline. I mean, we've been covering so many possibilities of delays or non-delays. Ming Shi Kuo reported that there would be delays because there are issues with the manufacturing of the ultra-wide lenses and everything, but that is getting debunked right now. 
sort of. According to Digitimes, Genius Electric Optical just put out a statement of their own. They said that their production is still running with no issues and that the demand from their clients remains normal. And if they are having issues, Apple's second supplier, Largan, would have to step it up and fill up the remaining orders. The only way the delay would actually happen is if Largan would fail to deliver these lenses if push comes to shove. This does mean that we should expect the delay that Apple mentioned, but apparently it's not going to be significant. We'll see. I mean, we're pretty much just a month away from a possible announcement. And finally, the hottest news today have to do with the finally product that is happening finally today. Take a drink for every time I say this. As yes, after 11 months, the Microsoft Surface Duo is now a reality. The device brings a 5.6 inch pixel sense fusion display well, should I say displays, which are connected by a 360 degree hinge, which allow you to use both of them in different modes. It is powered by a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855, six gigabytes of RAM and either 128 or 256 gigs of storage, along with a 3577 milliamp hour battery. And yes, it runs Android. It also brings a single 11 megapixel shooter with F 2.0 aperture, and it's capable of shooting 4K video at 60 frames per second. And actually this is the selfie camera that you can use use as a primary camera if you flip it around, etc. It runs on Android 10 with a Microsoft skin on it, which will bring pre-installed applications like OneNote, OneDrive, and others. And again, it just brings Microsoft 365 services. It's pretty much the Android Windows phone, if you think about it. It'll start shipping on September 10th, and it'll retail for $13.99 on AT&T, Best Buy, and the Microsoft Store. And uh, what can I tell you? I mean, I have been looking forward to this product I still feel that the form factor needs like a sort of external display, you know, so you don't have to be opening it every single time that you want to read a notification. I, f I think that's going to be probably the biggest issue that it has, but I'm really curious. I mean, $13.99 is actually not a crazy price tag for what you're getting. So let us know in the comments. Do you like it? Are you ordering one? Not because in my case, obviously, I'm lucky. I, I'll get to test it. And I really love the idea of this form factor. I just, I feel that it needed more on the outside. But that's just me. Leave us a comment down below. Let us know if you agree or disagree with me. Friends, again, if you want to get the news earlier, follow us on pocketnow.com and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. Also, follow us on social medias. Our extended coverage happens on Instagram. And follow me on my personal handles uh, to see me try to get this video done before it starts raining. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.